um, moving over to STS-80. Uh, read a great book by Tom Jones, Skywalking, mm. and he mentions in the book your uh, mid deck or your flight deck adventure during reentry. Uh, yeah. The plasma that you captured uh, for the camera. One, first one to get it. And the first person to ever observe the plasma all the way down. And the video is. I got that, but it's not good because I had to ad lib it. Hmm. I had to tape a camera to the end of a stick and hold it in a, you know, an overhead window. I, of course, did not have the back windows, you know, because the doors are shut. But so I got to hold this, and I'm standing up with 80 pounds of gear on and holding the camera so it's not steady. And at the same time I'm doing that, I'm showing a monitor to the flyers uh -huh. so they can enjoy the <laughs> Paramo and Taco. Uh -huh. And so, but now I had mature aviators. If I had not mature aviators, they'd have told me to go downstairs and get in my seat. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but these guys are tough. They're mature. They're a generation and a half younger than me. But they know what the hell they're doing. Those are mature aviators. They don't care what story he's doing. Yelling and screaming and talking about this and that. They don't care. They focus and concentrate on the flying job they're doing, and they mm -hmm. know I'm into the flying, ignore him. I'm done with what I gotta do now, enjoy him. Enjoy the scenes, enjoy the plasma. Okay, I gotta go back to work. Tune him out, go back to work. And so, Rommel and, uh, and Taco, they were mature aviators, they are confident aviators. I'll tune him out when I gotta work, and when I don't have to work, we'll have fun. So those guys had uh, the best of both worlds. They got to do the flying, they got to have the fun. I'm interested in, though, you spent nearly 18 days on orbit. <clears throat> to start feeling the 3G effects standing up, how did your body feel during that moment? Well, it was tough, but it was just 2G. What's 2G? Yes, yeah, 2. And so that's the peak of injury. It was tough. And Rommel kept looking at me. I says, he says, damn animal must grade. He says, you're animal. Because I'm taking G's standing up with 80 pounds of gear, the longest shuttle flight. And um, it was, uh, you know, I was kind of, I was working. I was working. But you see, I'm adding value. No one had seen the plasma, I'm adding value. What can I do to add value to this flight? Now people say, it's another thing. I added value to the flight. I'm the only human, probably still, to see the plasma all the way down. And I made some interesting observations, some very interesting observations. And I had the only video. But that's also not so good because, you know, we should have been filming that on all the flights. Mm -hmm. And all it takes is to have the mounting for a video camera and we hit start when we get in the seats. Huh? And you got it. Where would you point it out? The so, pilot's window or um, the overhead? No, no. Well, you might get, you can get out the front too because some of the interesting phenomenons coming off the nose cap as well. Mm -hmm. So the purple lightning that I saw feeding, <clears throat> feeding the plasma was really, it interacted. And the purple lightning, I said, oh, that's really strange. I look out the nose that was coming off the nose cap. And they saw that. So they saw the lightning coming off the nose cap. But it would feed. It would feed into the plasma that was that was back there, so it was part of the interaction. But it's <clears throat> I don't know what it means. You know, I don't know what uh, what science came out of it, but when a rocket would fire off, it would clear. The plasma would be gone. Well what is that? I don't know what the hell that is. But it's clear. There's not a bit of plasma. When one of those reaction control jets goes off, the plasma goes away. Huh? And then boom, it's right back. Boom, boom. Every time a rocket go off, clear. You know, snap right back a fraction of a second. And jeez, you know. Mm. Yeah, so but when you had a just doing S S turns for energy mm -hmm. management, when I had a different color on one side, so I'm looking out the window now. When I had a different color this side of the tail and that side. That's into auroral kinds of, you know, I got different molecules that are making different light. And I really didn't expect that. You know, what, what the hell's going on? Just because I'm doing turns, I got different molecules. 
<clears throat> so a different color, either side of the tail. And you know, I showed it to Tom, I showed it to people. So I'm not sure the video was, the video was on the end of a stick and I couldn't do that all the time. It was lousy video. At what point did you go back to your seat? I never did. You never did? Did you <clears throat> land standing up? I know, I landed lying down. Lying down behind the seats. I was saying On the flight the deck? Yeah, lying wow. down. I laid down. But see, you know, people talk about safety, but I'm safer than they are. If you got to bail out, I'm the first one in the door. <laughs> right. And I was ready to bail out. Mm -hmm. And I was also the cargo master that kicked everyone else out. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, you, you question safety. Well, you can't get into rough air. The shuttle can't do that or lose the control instantly. It, it's not, you, the shuttle can't do that. It's gone. It's history. Mm -hmm. It's out of there. Uh, so the shuttle cannot be doing this kind of stuff. Otherwise, it loses control instantly. It's an unstable vehicle. And so you have to have positive control like that. <clears throat> but if there's any contingency, I'm there ahead of everybody else. And I was the person that was supposed to get them out. I'm sort of the cargo master that would have blown the hatch and put the pole out, you know, and then help them get on the pole and get out. So I would have been there faster than anybody else. Do you believe in that bailout system post 51? The other, um, <coughs> <coughs> but um, I just for the landing, I, I laid down um, behind the seats. So um, I have even more security than the people who only have straps. So my line with my back against the seats, I was in a very good position for landing. It's kind of humorous, but after we landed, man, I wasn't feeling too good. I mean, I've been through a lot. Right. <laughs> I said, ooh, man. And I had no cooling either, see. Oh. Of course, I didn't didn't wasn't hooked into my thermoelectric. I had no cooling, and that really affects your ability to tolerate chase. I'm I'm hot mm -hmm. because I had no cooling all the way down. Because I don't my my cooler's downstairs. <clears throat> but I, you know, after we landed and all we're getting out, I thought I looked at the ladder. The ladder's only that wide. The ladder to go up and down. And I said I'm not going to haul eighty pounds of gear up and down the ladder. I'm going to dump it off up here. Helmet off, gloves off, I took a parachute off, so I just dumped everything out there. There's no reason I should carry that down the ladder. I don't feel like doing that, you know. So I dumped all my gear upstairs, and then I went down the ladder. I quickly hooked on to some cooling, got some cooling, and then, of course, pretty short of the ASP, that's the astronaut support, the person that relieves us mm -hmm. to finish up the job of mission control to put the thing to sleep. Now he came in. So then I went out. But he came in, and then, of course, there's no one downstairs. So I just, hi, and I walked, got out. But he went upstairs, and he's looking at all this equipment lying on the floor. They got a story on it. They got stories, gloves, stories, helmet, story, everything. He kind of scratched his head, you know. And he asked Taco, I says, why would Story carry all his stuff upstairs? Taco <laughs> <laughs> looked at him, you know. What is this guy thinking? And Taco said, he didn't carry it upstairs. <laughs> oh, my God, and he rode up here. <clears throat> yeah, so, but anyway, the safety was, I'm as safe as anyone else. And uh, I'll be faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's value added. I have the human report, the only, the only human report of the plasma, all the way down in the phenomenon, you know, the visual phenomenon, the video's not worth a damn, but it is something. Mm -hmm. So that was that. <clears throat>